Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to use the automatic pilot for landing as well as to set up the FMS for different landing purposes. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are, we're in this lovely Airbus A310. Uh, everything's uh, basically computer controlled from here on out. Uh, we're going to be arriving at Bradley, I uh, should say Bradley, we took off at Bradley. We're going to be landing at uh, Thurgood Marshall, aka PWI, Baltimore, Washington International in just a few minutes. So we need to program this computer because as you can see, it is a little IMC-like. And there's also quite a bit of ice, so we're going to take our time and our approach here. So what do we need to know in order to make this to work? So what I'm going to do is float down to my FMS and start getting some of this program first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the TO oh, APBR button. And I'm going to make sure it says approach at the tippy top. Now, the next thing you're going to notice is that when you look on here, we have two different options for our landing technique. We have 2020 and we have 3040 here. So if I press the 2020, it's going to set it to 2020 mode. If I press the 3040, it's going to set to 3040 mode. You're sitting there going, wait, what? Um, well, let me show you what that comes from. Let's go float over here. So as you notice, we have a bunch of different flaps and slats options here. You'll notice our slats go down to 30 degrees, and you'll notice our flaps go down to 40 degrees. So our 30, 40 is really saying 30 degrees of flat slats, 40 degrees of flaps, in case you're curious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using that particular approach. I'm going to make sure it's nice and highlighted here. That little star simply selects it. I don't see why you wouldn't, but again, you can do exactly what you want. So floating down here, there's a couple key numbers well, we really care about. And the first one's going to be this VAP. Uh, that's basically going to allow us to know what our approach speed is, and that's going to be 126. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're sitting there saying, well, what if I wanted to do 131? Can't do that. So unfortunately, because of the way this is engineered and designed, if we want to select 131, which we will, because we want that five little knot buffer, we'll do that when we get a little closer to the ground. Uh, next, we have a bunch of different options here, which are very critical. Uh, we have, of course, our when we can put down our flaps and our slats retracting and all that. We have this little box that says MDA. Uh, MDA simply refers to our decision altitude. So in this case, our decision altitude is typically going to be 200. And you can go ahead and mash that button right here. And when you're on final approach, there's actually a fun little button that you can go ahead and push that with. Uh, once I set my MDA, I like to float up here. I'm going to go ahead and pop this in here too. You'll notice we have a decision height option, but we can also just press DH. Go ahead and set this up to what we need it to be. We're going to set this up to 200 as well. And this is just going to act as a little reference for us uh, during our particular approach down to the ground. So uh, what's going to come next? Well, we have a couple different things we need to do. Well, one thing's for sure is uh, we're just about ready to cross the 10,000 foot point. So I'm actually going to reach above my head and flip on the nose light here. Why not? Why not? And we're going to float back down here, and we're going to double check to make sure our takeoff and approach is all set here. So I'm going to go to the flight plan. I'm going to scroll down. I've already pre-programmed this before, but if you didn't program it earlier, you go down to your destination. You click on this button here. You click on star. You'd pick what approach you're doing. You'd pick what transition, and then you'd press the insert button. For me, I always pick the runway first, and then I always pick these, and then delete any of the requisite, you know, discontinuities and stuff like that. You can see that in the uh, previous videos to see kind of how I did all that. But right now, it's all set. Now we've got the annoying part. We have to set the ILS frequency properly. Now we're flying into, uh, like I said, BWI here. It's going to be ILS 28 is going to be the particular PDF that we're going to be using here. It's a pretty easy one to use. Um, like I said, I like this runway because it's super duper duper long. I don't like this runway because unfortunately it's a little tiny bit close to this uh, strange part of Washington, uh, Saj, Baltimore that tends to create a lot of frame rate issues. So, unfortunately, during a little final approach point, that's going to be a little tricky for us. So let's go pop over to my desktop view here so you can see what kind of what I'm working on. And, um, I'm getting everything all nice and ready here. So we need a couple numbers off my little approach plate. First one's going to be the localizer freak. That's a 109.7. Let's go ahead and throw that in there right now. 109.70. We're going to pop that in. Looks pretty good here. Now we're going to select the course. Uh, the course in particular case is going to be 285 degrees. So we're just going to come in here like this. I know you're saying you should look out the window every once in a while. Aren't you afraid you're going to crash into the ground? Trust me, you'll hear altitude, altitude, or don't sink. Uh, way before that happens. So now we have the ILS frequency selected. We have the course selected as well. Now, the interesting thing here is um, when I float my head down here, so we have all of our computers and everything ready to go. You can see that I've got my decision heights. Everything's uh, preset, pretty much ready to rock. And you can actually see this little thing. This is VDEV, which is telling me how far off I am. I'm a little high. Like, for example, I can see Woody. I'm supposed to be at or uh, basically between uh, 5,000 to 6,000. And you can see right now I'm uh, chilling uh, high and dry because I spent way, way, way too much energy trying to get in position here. Of course, if we wanted to get the process uh, kind of accelerated a little bit here, there's nothing stopping us from uh, giving us a little tug of the old speed brakes here. Uh, pulling those suckers out, of course, uh, will make the whole aircraft buff it a little bit. It makes a heck of a lot of noise. And if you really go ahead and pop them down all the way, 
uh, what that will do, of course, is that'll get us slowing down in a hurry, enabling us to get a little bit closer. Uh, if you do have speed brakes, I recommend having a button on your uh, joystick so you can kind of snap them, because theoretically, you're not supposed to go to full speed brakes in the air. You're only supposed to stop at this position, but uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> the important thing is if I get below 6,000 feet before I get to my next spot. So what I want to do now is I'm going to flip over to my ILS mode, and the only thing that does is it's going to put your ILS controls on here. Again, coming down here, I'm not going to walk you through an ILS. I'm sure you've seen many videos about these already, but basically if you're new to it, uh, we, this is going to be the center point. This is us. This is where we need to be. So without doing any math or anything, you can see that where I need to be to land this plane is far off to my left. This little guy right here with this little uh, pink diamond, this represents up and down. So right now this is us. This is where we need to be. You can see we're very, very high and you can see where we need to be is much, much below us. Keep in mind, we're still about 6,500 feet here. So we have a long ways to go to actually get down to where we need to be able to put this thing on the ground. So what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm just going to snap this real quick so you can get a pretty good idea. See how this approach kind of takes us around this corner here, puts us on hertz, and then it's going to line us up. Uh, but don't you worry, I have a button for that. Now, this is a good time to talk about manually setting speed, by the way, uh, before we even get lined up at the runway here. I'm going to slow this aircraft down. We're going pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down on this, and I'm going to go actually slow this significantly. I'm going to drop us all the way down to 200 knots. Uh, the reason, actually, I'm going to go down to 195 here. And the reason I'm slowing down so much here is I want to be able to get into a position that when we get a little bit closer to the ground, I'm not going from 250 down to zero kind of a thing. Uh, this also works really, really well for me because this is going to set me up in a position where if you take a look at my speed right Right now I'm going to be almost lined up ready to rock and I can start feeding in things like my automatic flaps and stuff like that. Now some of you are like what are going to be our speeds for our slaps and flats and all that other good stuff. I think I just meant two new devices but I'm not going to stress about it. So one thing's for sure if you actually take a look really closely on our HSI they give you the values that you need to use right on the side of the device itself. Now notice I'm still in auto thrust mode and I have 195 selected here so that's going to be holding me at that speed. Now, I remember a little while ago I said my approach speed was going to be one particular speed. We go to take off and approach again. Remember how it was set to be 126 and I said I'd rather use 131? Well, good news. Uh, we're about to turn final, so we can actually dial in our different speeds uh, right away. So generally when I do these approaches, uh, what I like to do is I like to fly them pretty straightforward. Uh, we can see we're just a little off course here. We're just a little bit to the uh, right of the place we need to be. If you actually take a look at the map real quickly, you can see that where we need to be is a little more to the left, and you can see where our little automatic pilot is calling it right now. It's calling it slightly more off to that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue my slow down here. We're going to come down to 171, which will be uh, getting a little bit close to uh, speeds where we can start dropping stuff and getting ready to rock. Keep in mind, I have not touched any other automatic pilot button other than pulling this out and switching to level change mode so that I can manually dial in the speed I want to be traveling at here. Because like I said, I'd much rather be doing about uh, 171 at this time. So I'm going to slow down. You can see this little distinctive S. This is just going to remind me of when we're ready to go ahead and pop that next line on. We're going to go flip over here and pop that switch back and that's going to go ahead and uh, stick those handy dandy slats and everything down coming up above my head i'm going to go reach up smack up my landing lights so we could turn those on a while ago i'm not really worried about it I'm not falling any particular flow or anything like that i'm just like i said kind of showing you what i'm doing by the way fun fact i haven't touched my throttle this entire flight <laughs> my throttle right now over on my left hand side right now is still sticking to my left now a lot of people say when is it a good time to press the land button um, you can press it pretty much right when you're right about to be established on the localizer. So if you take a look at my chart, see I'm right about to start doing this. In just a moment, this little pink square is our pink diamond is going to start shooting. Do you see how it's starting to move? So I'm going to come over here, press the land button. Nothing's going to change. Uh, the reason nothing's going to change yet is because this hasn't appeared all the way. But you see how it popped on and now we have localizer star, meaning again, the star tells us that we're capturing that. Notice blue for local um, glide slope, which means we haven't captured the glide slope yet. And now notice the aircraft is basically kind of uh, feeling its way into position here. And I'm looking at this real quickly and I can see that we're gonna go ahead and do an altitude hold because it is critically, 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 critically low. Notice we're immediately getting the uh, don't sink warning here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll give this thing a quick little tug. Live, hear it? Hear it? Now that was a perfect illustration of why you have to be very, 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 very careful with this particular aircraft. As you can hear, uh, we're significantly below the glide slope here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a nice vertical climb here. Glide slope, glide slope, glide slope. And we're just gonna go ahead and get ourselves back up into the correct position that we should be above our heads here. Glide slope. There we go. Starting to climb. And we're gonna go ahead and get there. 
So one of the things you have to remember is when you are doing those changes between the modes, and I set this example up perfectly so you can see it, did you see how because the aircraft was on level change, not profile mode, that the constraint for the ILS was no longer programmed? Now that's an awesome little detail there because a lot of people do miss that. By the way, we can rearm um, land anytime. We can actually reacquire the localizer and we're actually flying up to meet the glide slope now, even though um, we're, like I said, a little on the low side here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, level ourselves off. And like I said, do you see how easy that is to do? Where basically you could have continually descended all the way down to the ground. Like I said, tricky, 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 tricky. All right, let's go ahead and get ready to land now. So we're doing 171. Uh, we're well within speed for our flaps. We can go bring in the next notch in just a minute. But like I said, I like to wait until I at least see my glide slope getting into position. Go ahead and speed up time a little tiny bit here. Ah, there we go. All right, so now if you take a look, our glide slope diamond is now behaving. It's actually in the correct position right here. By the way, great way to lose your license back there, what I did, but I thought I'd demonstrate that. Now that that's been set, we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of the aircraft all ready to rock here. We're gonna start slowing down to our final approach speed, which is approach plus uh, whatever the wind is. In this case, that's gonna be fine. Once we see this pop in, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in our next notch of flaps, which I've got set right there. Go ahead and flick on the other automatic pilots. Now notice uh, we've been upgraded from category two to category three. The other thing you probably observed is the fact that a glide slope and localizer are both captured right now. And since I'm on glide slope, it's a good time to go ahead and pull the old landing gear handle. Nice. Okay, now it's a good time to go ahead and double check to make sure you've got everything set the way that you want it to be set. Looks good there, looks good there. Go ahead and pop that last couple clicks of flaps in. And now this aircraft is on its own. You'll notice we have the Category 3 light on right now. The Category 3 light is uh, the maximum performance landing that we can have. A couple things that you probably noticed is, uh, like I said, my speed has been selected. My vertical speed is uh, going to be zero. My altitude select, everything like that. Now, as a general rule, uh, this is just more of an IFR thing than anything, is that when you're coming in for any sort of landing, it's really important to make sure whatever your missed approach procedure is, you've got ready to rock before you get down onto the ground. So I'm taking a look real quickly at the missed approach fix, and that takes us up to Westminster. Uh, taking a look at the missed approach, climb to 1500, then 260. So we're looking at 2600 feet. It's going to be our missed approach altitude. We also are going to have an initial heading of 305 degrees. So I'm just going to come in here so I know if I have to go map, I can just go ahead and mash the map button, go around, and uh, not have to stress out about any of the details here. So that's set. Uh, that's set. Uh, of course, we're going to be having a VOR. We're going to be proceeding direct to EMI. Uh, Westminster is 117.9er. Let's go ahead and get that all programmed in while I'm waiting. Uh, actually, we'll leave this alone because uh, we haven't we have an autopilot we're just gonna let it do it for us so at this point it's hands off uh, one of the great things about these uh, nice airbuses is they do have some basic auto line auto line capability another thing you'll notice is if i float my head down here you're going to see the cat three is still selected you're going to see flight director one is set to dual and you're also going to notice that when i float my head over here whoa that both the autopilot switches are on in the event that one fails now if you remember a minute ago i was mentioning the fact that this is the part of maryland where the frame rate is low it's actually very hard to drive here in the real world because the frame rate gets so low that it becomes very very difficult to you know safely navigate on the road you have to slow down a little bit but everything else is pretty much uh, we just relax <laughs> one of the things i love about this is uh, you notice the computer over here automatically switched to go around mode you notice that everything's completely controlled by the computer and it's going to honk and uh, blast at us uh, pretty aggressively now at any point of course we could take over but because this is a category three approach i'm going to watch how airbus does as far as its own category three approach now one thing i'm noticing is we're coming into land here is we're getting bounced around pretty good now notice we have the word land. Land simply means it's land. And the most fun part is you're gonna see this land turn into a flare and you're gonna see this SPD turn into a retard. You'll see what I mean. There's the warning. I love this part. So you know what bumps feel like? This. Feel it. And I'm still having to, boom, we're down. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Isn't that incredible? I will say that was a little bit on the bumpy side. I think they need to uh, play with some of the settings. 
and we're here. So uh, you're going to get the autopilot off warning about a thousand times. You can just click it a bunch of times and it disables it. But we are now safely at our destination. Um, the only controls that I've had to touch this entire flight are the buttons that are up on the MCP as well as the FMS. But you can see that this aircraft is pretty darn capable on its own without you having to press a lot of buttons and kind of tweak a little knobs. Uh, the one thing we did see, and I'm glad that we saw an opportunity to see, is make sure you idiot check what you're doing. Uh, you'll run into a situation like I demonstrated where we basically went way past the minimum constraint because we had done that manual adjustment during our flights. So one of those things you got to remember, even though the autopilot is very capable, the FMS is very capable, the MCP is very capable, it still has that risk. So before you touch anything, especially if you're in the soup, make sure you know what you're doing. Oh, somebody stole my parking spot, jerk. Uh, make sure you know what you're doing and make sure you're thinking things through at all times. Now, one of the great things is this aircraft in the real world, as you can see, fairly complicated, typically has a second person flying around with you that can kind of, uh, you know, kind of keep an eye on things. But the important bit is, again, as you'll find out with air traffic control when they start telling you to go around, it's just apply that common sense. You know, where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? Is this everything working the way it should or should I be taking manual control? But other than that, enjoy.